drink beer. Think beer. You're listening to Brew Bloods. Welcome to episode 121 of Brew Bloods. This is part two of the Women in Craft Beer 2017 panel that was held at Brain Dead Brewing that was part of North Texas Beer Week. If you missed part one, I would encourage you to go back and listen so you have an intro to uh, all of these beer ladies. This panel is comprised of 13 women that are involved in the industry from brewing to sales, and they all have really unique stories. In this part, however, Mallory from Brain Dead opens it up to Q&A from the audience and has a few questions of her own. So without further ado, here is part two of the Women in Craft Beer 2017 panel recorded at Brain Dead Brewing in Dallas. Boom, go women. All right, all right, all right. All right, guys, again, my name is Mallory. I am a, a manager here at Brain Dead. I'm actually the only female manager here at Brain Dead, which makes me <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which makes me particularly qualified to moderate this event. <laughs> um, all right, so we're going to go into the Q&A section. Um, you're welcome to still fill out comment cards or question cards. Pass them to the end, and we will uh, try to get to them as quickly as possible. Uh, after this, we will go into just a, the good old fashioned raise your hand and have a little chat sesh. Um, so, the first question I think is specifically geared for uh, Stephanie. What does, oh, and then I will say we only have one mic now. So, I'm going to ask questions. Yeah, I can walk, they're pretty long. Um, I can only walk about this far. Uh, so I'm going to ask some questions. If anybody wants to answer it, just come right over here. If not, then I'll just start bullshitting, I guess. Well, all right. Stephanie, what does sh** dang mean? <laughs> I will never tell. <laughs> all right. <laughs> okay. The next one. What are the biggest challenges for national brands selling in the Dallas market? Well, hello again, everybody. Uh, so I'd say one of the biggest things that we face being a regional brand, we are not quite national, is that locality is key. Like, look at this amazing panel of awesome local women in the beer world. Now, how, now how do we... Uh, make an impression on you guys. We are really working on trying to stay innovative, making sure that we as a brewery teach consumers everything that you can possibly know about not only Odell Brewing, but craft brewing in general. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Caitlin. All right, our next question. When deciding... Which styles to brew? How important is it to follow trends? It sounds like me, but we do true to style, and yeah, that's not me, sorry. (laughs) Not that, okay, yeah, I'm going to stop talking. (laughs) Gotta stay innovative, really. Fresh grind ale. And I mean, we got the Freak, it's a Lambic, and a Frambozoa. Freak? So really, you gotta just, just... Think outside the box, because that's what sells. So basically, it's it's probably not that important to stay true to trend. You just you brew what you want to brew as a brewery, and you hope that it succeeds. Um, all right, now we're gonna get more into a little bit of the female segment. Uh, what's your favorite part about being a female in craft beer, and worst part? The best part. Is being a female in craft beer. <laughs> and you know what follows. The worst part is being a female in craft beer. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, anybody else want to add to that? No? Okay. I feel like the best part of being a female in craft beer is educating others that females are smart and we're not fucking idiots. We have taste buds, just like... Guys have taste buds. We have brains. Yeah. We can educate. You can educate. The best part's just we're smarter, I guess. 
Um, I like this one because this is something I face probably literally every day being a front of house manager in a brew pub. Uh, can you describe a specific situation in which you faced and overcame sexism in the brewing industry? I bet probably each of us has a story. <laughs> okay, and honestly, I'm sharing this because it's not what you think you're going to hear. Um, so this story, actually, and I'm going to make a full circle. Um, it starts off with another female, actually, that I received this from. And I was telling April about the story earlier, how, you know, most people are like, oh, what's it like being a female in the craft beer industry? I'm like, well, I only know what it's like being a female. I don't know what it's like being a male. But so I have gotten some not so great moments, some experiences from other women. And that's, and see, this is where my ADD brain starts going into different branches. But uh, the bad experience was this uh, bar manager, I, I walked in, because I used to deliver kegs. That's how I got started it, at Pedicolas. I used to drive a box truck and deliver kegs all over DFW. That shit was hard, but it was fun. Anyway, so I show up at this bar. And she, she just get, gave me this look. It's like up and down. Like, what is this girl doing? And essentially had me rearrange her entire walk-in cooler and double stack some kegs. And I'm like, come on, man. <laughs> I'm just trying to... Like, we're on the same team here. And so going back to some of the challenges, I think it's just, damn, appreciate that we're all trying to... We're here for, for, for this. For this here. This, this amazing product that we all make. This beer. And so being around each other and educating each other and promoting each other, that's what it's all about. And so, yeah, some of the challenges, yeah, dudes can be dicks, whatever. So can girls, but we'll get over it. Uh, but where I said I was going to make a full circle and kind of self-promote, do you guys know about Pink Boot Society? <laughs> uh, yeah, so... We have a chapter here in North Texas, and if you guys make any kind of living from, the, from, from beer, then you should join. And the funds all go towards educating women in beer, which is what we want to do. We want to be able to show up at an event and say, yeah, I know about malt, I know about hops, I know what the hell you're doing in that tank. And yeah, so join. Guys, it's like 35 bucks. Jennifer, I've been telling you for a really long time that you need to join, because you do beer. Right? Join as a... Yes, you can join as a student. Oh, shoot, sorry. Uh, spilling bear. Yeah, if you're taking a class about malting, you can join the group. And that money goes towards funding scholarships for women to go get educated across the country. They just finished a trip in Europe. They were there for like a month going to all sorts of breweries. So that's for a great cause. Let's just pump each other up and share your knowledge. Yeah, everyone's going to have shit experiences, but we'll come through. It happens. Anyway, cheers. I'm done. Thank you. Uh, I actually wanted to touch on this one because I had a specific story of something that happened uh, to me here. Um, it was a little over a year ago. I was talking to a table and a gentleman asked if the, uh, the bearded fellow behind me could explain a little bit more about beer. He, he had some questions that he, I guess, didn't feel that I could answer. Um, I proceeded to answer all of his questions, and that was wonderful. But this is it's kind of a positive story because we're in a, a good learning environment now um, where the temperature of the world is a little weird with women, but I think everybody wants to help. And um, at the end of the, the dining experience, the gentleman came over and apologized to me because he said he wanted to be on the right side of history and he really, really felt like he had fucked up a little bit. And, uh, and he recognized it completely. And it was a really, really humbling, very, very cool experience that a, a man who proceeded to be a little sexist and assume that I had no idea what I was talking about because I was a woman and there was a guy with a beard behind me who surely a bearded fellow is going to know more about beer than I was. Or a bearded lady. Or a bearded lady. <laughs> there you go. That's an awesome tattoo. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was just, it was a cool experience. Uh, they're not all negative. I feel like a lot of my, my sexism has been great because I get to say at the end of it, hey, guess what? 
I know what I'm talking about. And um, they, they suddenly realized, like, oh, my gosh, I just did something pretty sh**. But immediately owned up to it. They weren't just, they didn't continue to be animals. They just immediately became the people that we know that all people can be, which is positive and uplifting and on the right side of history. Herstory. As, yeah, Brittany liked it when I said herstory. <laughs> all right, did anybody else have an experience they wanted to share? about sexism in the workplace that they've experienced and they, uh... <laughs> so, super funny story. Uh, so, my, my loving boyfriend comes out to a lot of beer events with me and uh, he is the, beer, the bearded man behind uh, me that a lot of guys were uh, asking questions to him most times, just kind of overlooking the fact that I'm the, I'm the female that, that actually works for the brewery. He volunteers, and they, oh, these guys come up and ask questions and stuff. It's really funny when he shaved his beard that uh, that quickly changed. Uh, and, and then I was respected a lot more. <laughs> I, I, sorry, I just thought that was a funny thing to put in that, yeah, it, it might not be necessarily sexism towards females, but just beers and beards? I don't know. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Um, here's the next question, which I guess sort of goes into the same thing. So if you have any other information, it would be, how do you regularly get mansplained about beer? <laughs> I was actually recently mansplained what mansplaining is. So that's a unique situation that I think only women get. Can... There you go. <laughs> um, I also just popped up because I thought of something that happens a lot, you know. Um, when we're at beer, so this is, I'll answer two questions in one, but um, when I poured at dozens and dozens, maybe a hundred beer festivals, and a lot of times guys will come up with two cups and they'll say, can you give me something that my girlfriend will like? And I'll be like, she'll probably like this dank IPA because more often I find when people come up to my booth, the women are the ones that want the IPA and the guys will say, I want something light, I want something, I want a lager. I mean, this is Texas, so I guess I'm just getting used to that since I'm from California too. But, um, Actually, I got mansplained the other day. So for those of you that don't know what mansplaining is, it's when a man tries to explain something to you that, of course, you f know. Oh, sorry. Um, <laughs> so I actually had that happen from... Um, I've had it happen a couple times with this, this uh, other beer rep from a brewery that I absolutely love and respect. And, uh, and he'll just say things to me like, um, uh, just try and explain distribution to me and I'm like well you know I manage three states and so I have like ten distributors and I have to manage their orders so I do know how a truck goes from one state to the other um, but it's just really weird because everyone in this industry and I got into it um, I think there's a lot more females than there used to be and everyone has actually been really awesome even when I, I don't meet a lot of other female reps but there is there's just this one person that's just been mansplaining to me lately. So um, I've been in this industry for five years. That's happened to me now twice. So it's rare, but yeah, I guess it still happens. Yeah. Anyway, and women love hoppy beer. <laughs> yeah, that's great when a man tries to explain to you what an IPA is. It's like, pretty sure I understand it. I'm sorry? Yeah, it's an iced pale ale. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's a pale ale served over on the rocks. <laughs> Up. <laughs> so this is another Lakewood specific question, ladies. Um, how does Lakewood have national chain accounts not if not sold outside of Texas? <laughs> um, no. <laughs> so part of it is just my title. National accounts, chain accounts is summed together. So a national account is anything that's obviously distributed or sold out, you know, nationally. Chains like Kroger, 7-Eleven, Walgreens, CVS, um, Total Wine, um, Chili's, TGI Fridays, places like that are your national and chain accounts. As craft beer and local, especially in Texas, has grown and grown, Breweries need a position like mine that specifically calls on those chains and like keeps share of mind because not only are they 
you know, getting presented with Lakewood, but they're going to be getting presented with Austin East Siders and 903. And I know Odell is in there because I run into their people in the market. And, you know, same thing with Ale Smith. So it's, it's, you have such a limited, limited amount of space that you need somebody in there to represent and take care of your brand. And it also helps grow it, you know, if we want to grow to different markets, not necessarily outside of Texas, but say Houston. It helps give you, you know, a little bit more reputability in those markets to say that, you know, my beer's already carried in Kroger or HEB. So, and I'm, I'm the sh- so, I'm just, I'm just kidding. Thank you so much. All right, Brittany, this one's for you specifically. What drew you to get your certification, Brittany? So, I think this is in reference to just being a certified beer server, because uh, that's my only certification uh, other than badassery. Um, <laughs> feminism uh, and all of the cool badass stuff that I do. I don't know. Uh, no, I was just... Uh, I, it's so important to learn more and even in like a formal environment learn more. So, uh, you know, Cicerone certification, certified server, uh, those are all important steps to take to just kind of add some credibility to your name and your understanding uh, of beer in the industry. So that's something that uh, I just wanted to, to do, to, to pursue, and uh, I think it's uh, important. Uh, so, yeah. Um, while I have the mic, I want to I share something kind of super tragic, like a really difficult story about mansplaining. Uh, so we once had somebody uh, try to explain gravity in the form of ejaculate. <laughs> Yes. What do you do? Uh, you literally just try to get them far away from you. Uh, so, yeah, I, I mean, you run into crazy shit like this sometimes. That's a difficult story for me to share, too, because I'm not, not equipped to handle that situation. You have a consumer who's intoxicated. What do you do? You just try to get them away from you. It's, it's the best I could think in that moment, but that happens. That literally happens. People lose their inhibitions and think that it's okay to talk like that to you, uh, and it's not. So just for the record, if you're ever going up to a female beer rep and trying to describe gravity in the form of ejaculate, just stop. Reevaluate your life. In the words of Greta, reevaluate your life. So... I'm literally dumbfounded. <laughs> I don't even, I'm speechless as to what some people think they can get away with talking about. To other humans. So should we just say right here and now, let's just don't make other people feel f-ing uncomfortable. Just don't do it. If you think that it might make somebody feel uncomfortable, just don't. If you have to ask, it's probably going to make somebody uncomfortable. Don't do it. God, that was a really good. <laughs> I can't. Yeah, I, I, I'm. Yeah, speechless. Uh, thank you for sharing. <laughs> um, all right, we're approaching the last few questions that I have here. So if you have any more, wrap them up, write them down. We'll get to it after this. We can go to a straight. Raise your hand and talk about whatever you want to talk about. You know, it doesn't have to be about beer. It doesn't have to be about women. We can just talk. <laughs> we can just, you know. Um, so this one is a really, really good broad one. Do you have any advice for how to get into this this industry? Hello again. Um, so, you know, we talked about, and I know several of us have done it. We were volunteers prior to, and then we kind of, like, they fell in love with us. We fell in love with them. They hired us. It's great. I'm going to tell you, it is not necessarily that simple anymore just because there are a lot of people that want to be in this industry. It's an amazing industry. It's an amazing community. The fact that you guys are here tells me that this is something you're drawn to as well. So, I mean, I just, I love seeing that. My advice to you, get to know beer. Get to know what you like. 
get, you know, and, and really spend some time learning those things. Spend time educating yourself. Like we, that's one of my favorite things about the brewery that I work at is they are very good at making sure we understand what's happening. Um, I also encourage you to, you know, if you like a brewery, get to know those guys. Like go hang out at the tap room, ask questions, start Hey guys, are y'all, do y'all have volunteers? Because I know Pedicolis does have volunteers still. Um, we actually do, we work with the, there's a brewing program in Eastfield and they come in and, and brew with us sometimes as part of that program. So there's programs you can get involved in. Guys, you can go learn how to brew in a community college. It's a, it's a cool program. <laughs> are you involved in that? Fantastic. Oh, that's awesome. So we, we love having you guys come to the brewery. It's a, it's a really cool experience. It also kind of, it's cool for our brewers, too, because, you know, I don't know if you know this, and I think Georgie kind of touched on this, brewers are not really that social. Uh, <laughs> they'll listen to heavy metal, and because uh, heavy metal is good for yeast. I don't know if y'all know that. I think that's a, I think that's a thing. You got good death metal. The yeast is like, yes. Um, <laughs> but I encourage you, if you like a beer, if you like a brewery, get to know those guys. Get involved in programs like what they have at Eastfield. Uh, you know, get online. Learn how to do this. Like, learn about the certified Cicerone. Learn about the certified beer server. That's stuff you can do online, guys. Like, there's, there's a lot of education out there. Seek it out. I think that when you come in with that knowledge and you say, hey, I already know this kind of stuff. I would really love to come share my knowledge with your brewery. That's awesome. They're going to love that. Look for jobs. There's always jobs out there if that's something that you're interested in. Uh, it's, it's just such an amazing community, and I just encourage you to don't, you know, if you don't get it, the first job you go for, don't give up. This is, you're going to find your home. And this kind of ties back into, um, I guess, like chain and national accounts. Apply at places like Portastic and Maximum Beverage because we hire brewery or we hire these companies to go help us demo within stores like Total Wine, Specs, Kroger, Albertsons, because we can't be everywhere. And we're a lot more likely to look at a resume coming in for a brand ambassador or for an, you know, an entry-level sales rep if you have that kind of experience because it means that you've got just at least a little baseline knowledge of, of how the off-premise works and, and how a demo works. And then you can also get kind of hired out to they, a lot of beer festivals, hire, hire these companies to help them pour. And you might be paired up with your, your favorite brewery and be able to get your foot in the door that way. It's a good side hustle doing those kind of demos. I just, yeah, I know where everyone's like, oh, we got, an, we got an idea for you to do something over the weekend. Um, no, I was going to say, um, it was so lovely that you brought up the pink boots. I have a girlfriend who works for um, 21st Amendment in uh, San Francisco, and pink boots paid for her to go down to UCSD, where they have a fantastic program in, yeah, in, um, <laughs> sorry, in like actual beer business and brewing and she got to take like a week or two of coursework and they paid for everything for her so um, that really does happen so someone's got to get that right so you might as well join Pink Boots and you can be a bartender or anything and um, how to get in I, I think you should get a job at a tap room because they can be some of the best paid people in the business you can make some pretty good money if you work at a busy tap room so that's all <laughs> Sorry, 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 sorry. Yes, to uh, go off of what they were saying, too, brand ambassador work is something, too. Uh, If you go to the local breweries that uh, sometimes they they don't outsource um, tastings and stuff, so if you're looking for brand ambassador work, it's definitely a good gateway. Um, And just to shamelessly plug Noble Ray, we are currently looking for a Fort Worth sales rep. So if you are interested, please... Uh, make yourself known to me and I will give you my card because we need people. Thank you. And you don't have to live in Fort Worth. No, you don't have to live in Fort Worth. You just have to be willing to travel a lot. It's so far away. Um, <laughs> we distribute 50 miles outside of Pedicola, so it's far. Uh, okay, so for volunteering on the production side, if you guys are interested have a realistic expectation of what they're going to ask of you, which is to clean. And that is it. That is it. Maybe help bottle. But you're going to get the job that the brewers do not want to do 
which is clean, but it needs to happen. And so I'm seeing volunteers come through our brewery that are amazing, and then some that I'm like, are you sure you want to be here? Because, dude, cleaning a fermenter has to happen, and you just you look like you hate it. And I had a friend of mine that was like, hey, dude, oh, my God, I'm going to come volunteer. So what beer are we going to get to brew? I was like, buddy, I'm an assistant brewer. I don't get to brew all the time. I, I'm sorry. You're not, you're not going to get to brew. You're going to have to clean a few pumps, clean a few tanks, clean a few kegs. And he was like, ah, oh, really? That's it? And so, yeah, if you want to come into production, just understand that sanitation and cleanliness is above all else. And so if you can appreciate having a beautiful, shiny, bright tank, then you know it's for you. Okay, that's it. And really, a clean brewery is a happy brewery, right? (laughs) But back to Maura, what was Maura saying is that uh, Pink Boots is a great outreach for all of us ladies. Um, I got a great scholarship going to OSU and learning some great sensory for uh, beer. And honestly, like that really promotes getting the ladies involved. And the more ladies we have to keep that brewery clean, lady, um, the best, you know. And we've got great, um, not to be bad on our males we got great guys behind us rooting for us because we're a team and that's what it's about is making great beer together as a team with lots of ladies paying attention to those clean details yes um and on that though i will or note i will say here at brain dead uh considering that we're a brew pub we have several employees who have started as servers And then volunteer in the brewery and then gradually become, uh, you know, a very, very important part of the brew team. So maybe you just want to be involved in the service industry and are, like, brew curious, then you can. (laughs) Thanks, guys. I'll be here all night. Um, Then you can uh, then you can apply to be a server here and and uh, potentially volunteer your way into the brew house um, I know that we had full-time brewers. Spencer is sitting right over there. He was a... <laughs> he's a man. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but it typically starts as, as serving and bartending and just expressing interest in being involved. And that's how you become involved. Speak up. Say something. I know that I never would have become a manager had I not just fucking said, hey, I want to be a manager. <laughs> You have to say something. Um, that was really great. Does anybody else have anything to talk about? No? All right. I like this question. Um, I have this one, and then I personally have one more. Um, are there any other questions that sort of being passed forward? Okay. All right. Here's the second to last question, then. Where do you see yourself in five years? With lots more ladies in the brewing industry. Woo! <laughs> gonna do that that's expensive here we go eight five years i'm not sure but i know i definitely still want to be with my company even though like i said i never thought i'd be with a cidery but it's a badass cidery so here i am Uh, i will say uh in the next year we're opening a tasting room here in dallas so you guys will be able to come to our tasting room and try ciders the most exciting thing for me is that I'll be actually managing it and hopefully be in charge of making the cider. So I get to take my brewing experience and turn it into cidery fermentation. So I get to do a lot of fun stuff, barrel-aged stuff. I will say that if you come on Saturday here at the festival, we have a Cabernet barrel cider that's going to be here, and we also have a Woodford Reserve barrel that's going to be here. Um... I don't know, in five years, I'll be still drinking beer and, I don't know, having fun. Thank you, April. All right, I'm going to say the most cliche thing possible. I just want to be happy. Like, whatever it is that I'm doing in the brewing industry, uh, I've taken a liking to sensory. That's actually where I broke my ankle, was in Colorado. I was shattering the sensory scientist in New Belgium so that we can develop a program at our brewery. Um, and yeah, I want to do sensory and blending barrels because 
the magic that happens in there and in here, you guys, it's fucking phenomenal. And you pair it with cheese and it blows your mind. So, and I'm like, just intolerant. So this is like quite a dilemma that I have to deal with. Um, but yeah, so that's that for right now. But at the same time, it's like this industry, it just, it changes constantly. I, I, I want to say I want to be a sensory scientist and blend barrels. But if you would have told me that I would have been in the beer industry, I don't know, like three years ago, I'd be like, what? Beer? No way. And now I'm here. So who knows? Just keep your mind open. That's it. <laughs> Hi. So in five years, uh, what I want for myself, I want to continue being an ambassador for craft beer uh, to all people. I want, I want to preach the mes message that craft beer is an inclusive community, uh, that we believe in incorporating everyone. And I want to open up craft beer to all kinds of demographics. Uh, I want people to feel as comfortable as possible in DFW being a part of our community. Um, so in five years, I want to continue doing what I'm currently doing. Uh, I just want to go forward and go bigger and go harder. Um, I, hopefully in five years, I get my Cicerone certification. Uh, I've been saying that for two years now, so we'll, we'll see how that goes. Um, yeah, I want to build uh, Pink Boots North Texas. Uh, I want more and more members to join us. We just started in January. Come be a part of our tribe. We are badass. We care about beer education. Uh, let's continue all of that magic. I think that's it. I want to be a better home brewer in five years. Wow. Uh, so five years from now. So my, um, I love this community so much. Like I'm just, I've, I've cannot believe how much it's grown. I can't believe how much we've all kind of embraced each other. Um, a lot of people are like, yeah, you know, you got competitive breweries. We're not really, we're competitive. Yes, sure. I mean, that's a, that's a fact, but it's not, I'm not trying to hurt anybody else to further myself. I'm building them up as well. And I, I hope, and I know they build me up as well. Um, five years from now, man, I want to, I want to see Lakewood continue to grow. Like I, I plan on being at Lakewood. Like there, I, I'm going to tell you right now, uh, my retirement plan involves Lakewood Brewing Company. Uh, this is a family. We're a family owned and operated. And I feel like I'm just as much of a member of that family as if I was, you know, blood or married into it. Like seriously, these are my, this is my people. Um, so in five years, I'd love to see us expand again we've already expanded twice now um i'd like to see us expand further i'd like to see our sour program really kick some ass once that gets rolling um, i'd like to see our bear works program also be something that is talked about across all of the land um but i also want to make sure that like in five years from now people are still going man that temptress Damn, that's a good beer. Man, that lager, that is my favorite beer. I keep a six-pack in my fridge all day, air day. <laughs> that's what I want to see. I want to see us become a household name. I want to see other breweries become household breweries, not, well, I keep Bud Miller Coors in my fridge, but when I'm out, I, I drink, you know, I drink Lakewood or I drink Noble Ray or I drink, you know, Odell. I want to see people truly embrace it and, and make that... You know, the soccer moms are picking up those beers. The, the you know, the stay-at-home dads are picking up those beers. Like, this is the beer that they go to. And that's what I want to see us all grow to. That's what I hope for in five years. Um, in five years, I, I hope to be part of the team that's taking Lakewood into a bigger regional brand and, and helping the brand grow. I hope I'm part of that. I hope that I get a you know, build a team underneath me. And, you know, you're, I think that the goal is to help... Leave, leave it a little bit better than you left it, anything that you do. So I hope that I continue to hopefully make a positive impact on Lakewood. And I hope that I just continued that, you know, that this industry continues to grow and support women the way that it has. And, you know, I just, it's a long time ago, it was just, there weren't very many women in this, in this industry. And that time wasn't that long ago, like eight, nine years ago, there just weren't that many women. So to see this many women sitting here now, that's my goal is that every year, like I, I hope in five years that it's a lottery. No, you know what? There's just too many of you. We just, we don't have room. So we're going to put all your names in a hat. 
We're going to draw like five or six of them out, and that's how we're going to run this event every year. So, you know, I've got a daughter. I just, I, I hope that there continues to be badass ladies like you that, that pave the way for her to, to do whatever she wants to do. So. Thank you. Is there anyone else? There we go. Well, hello, everybody. Uh, so, fun fact about Odell Brewing Company, it is actually employee-owned. In five years, I will be fully vested in the company. <laughs> uh, so, we are only a regional brewery. We really liked small controlled growth, making sure that we, when we open a market, we open a market correctly. Like, we don't want to have any kind of issues of somebody coming into the market, not liking our beer, and us having to pull out. We really want to make sure that we have quality liquid everywhere that we put it. And uh, there's so much growth with Odell Brewing. And I am born and raised from Texas, but you never know. We could end up anywhere. Thanks, guys. Um, in five years, I would like to be sitting in less traffic. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's just like an idealist like way of life that I, I would love to live but um, I already left LA so I'm getting there you know that's good but yeah um, just spending less time in the car that's the, in a role that allows that that would be cool that's all I got <laughs> yeah. um, I know I, re I spend a lot of time in planes too but it's cool because you can sleep through those Left. All right, Mallory's getting us some beers because she's really nice. So if nobody else, anything before we call it quits, questions from the audience. This lovely lady hiding in the back by the barrels. This was Jeff. <laughs> no, I don't know what I'm doing up here. <laughs> All right, so hello, everybody. I'm a beer buyer. I am the f latest April. So after she left, I gained her position. But this has nothing to do with Whole Foods. It was more of a, uh, I went to Sierra Nevada to brew a beer. And I was the only woman out of 12 people who got to brew this beer. You know what? It was awesome. It was great to know that <clears throat> we get it, man. It was a good beer, but it was wild to show up, and it was great. You know, we, it was a great group of guys, and we showed up. We made this incredible beer, but while there at Sierra Nevada, when it was very strange to be the only woman out of 12 individuals who got to brew a beer there, there were women brewers there. There were other people in the beer business that were women, and it made a lot of difference. It made me realize, like, we're not alone. You know, but the beer was great. And it was, I just want to tell you. And on that point, it's the guys who are bringing us to the, who are helping bringing us, because we're a team together, bringing us to the front, because we are a team. Sometimes. We're better. Uh, any other, yeah, I know. Any other questions from the audience? Please, because I'm going to start talking in different accents and y'all don't want to hear that. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not that drunk. Uh, anything else? Anybody? Bueller? Bueller? No, I believe you, Mallory. I'm just trying to fulfill your... So I'm not doing a very good job. I was just trying to service you. <laughs> All right. So... <laughs> Uh, what they're doing right now, I, I created something weird to do at a brew pub. Uh, I, uh, I made a bunch of cocktails out of beer because you don't have to have liquor to have fun. Um, anyway, my question was, I just want to know how many women work at your each individual brewery. Uh, I'm prepared to answer mine. We have 15 women out of about a staff of Front of the house is pretty evenly distributed. We have about 31 members of the front of the house staff, so we, or 32 maybe, 
and we have 15 women. So that's a pretty, pretty even line. Uh, my five-year plan is let's just see us do more. Uh, how many women work at Petacolis? Full-time? At all. Oh, at all? I don't know at all because there are co- quite a few, like... Then let's go full-time. Uh, this is embarrassing. But actually, great, if you're recording, <coughs> boss, there are only two. Uh, myself, but hold on, hold on, time out. <laughs> myself, a brewer, and the tapper manager, Shelly, who's amazing. I love her. So, Ugh. got too close. I yeah. How many? Did you see how fast I walked? That was really impressive. You guys, I'm getting better. Um, yeah, two of us uh, at Pedicles Brewing Company. And, and how many total would you think? Oh, shoot. I'm a bad employee. Maybe like eight. No, maybe just like how many of the people that you're thinking about, women out of 10 dudes? I don't even know, dude. Like wow. full-time employees, there are 16 of us. Two of them are women. So Tap room, room. Two out of 16. Tap room. I know there's like at least another four or five, but I don't know what the tap. Uh, how, many, how many female brewers do you have? Just me. Woo! Just me. Also, first female hired there. Thank you. But currently not brewing because of this <laughs> stupid thing. But uh, anyway, yeah, I'm doing other fun things. Okay, bye. <laughs> All right, Brittany, how many women work at 903? Uh, so we have five full-time employees and two of us are women. Woo! That includes, that's me and my, uh, and my, my boss, Natalie Roberts, who's a badass. Okay, cool. Lakewood. Okay. So I can't really count tap room because tap room kind of, they cycle around. We do have quite a few women that work in the tap room, but our sales team is three fifths women. It's a pretty good ratio. Uh, <laughs> and then the, the brewery itself, uh, our owner, our, one of our owners is actually female. We have, um, we have a lady that's a cellarman slash uh, packaging. She's one of the managers. of pa- She's not a manager. She's just, just below that. She's also on there. So we're eight total uh, ladies. And I think there's only 30 employees total. 28 employees. So eight out of 28. <laughs> Uh, so at Odell, on the sales side of things, throughout most of the U.S., there are only five women on the sales team. Two of those reside here in Texas. <laughs> on the production side of things, we only have four. And uh, I'm not counting the tap room, uh, but our, our tap room manager for our brewery in Fort Collins and our brand new facility that we're opening in Denver in the Rhino District. Uh, she is amazing. Uh, but out of about 135 employees, there are about 10 of us. So as far as Noble Ray is concerned, uh, I would say most of our tap room and brand ambassadors are female. But as far as full-time salary employees, the majority of the power positions are female. I'm head of sales. Our tap room manager is a female our uh, office manager is a female. Our head of marketing is a female. Um, brewing is the only side of us that doesn't have a female yet. Uh, hopefully, that's something that's changed soon. Again, taking more applications. <laughs> Again, yes. <laughs> okay. Is that everybody? Did anyone have any last minute raise your hand kind of questions? None at all. I had to actually call and find out how many women we have because I don't know. I know that we definitely have 56 employees and we're distributed in a lot of states other than Texas. Um, But working actually in the cidery, making the cider, we have one, Brittany, who is our fermentation specialist. She's actually one of the head ladies in charge of making all of our cider. But company-wide, we have 10 so, pretty good average, I think. So, five-year plan, you went 25 or 30. Yeah, I would say so. I will say that I was the first lesbian hired. And I only know that because when I asked for um, benefits for my partner, they were like, what do, you, what do you mean? Can't you just, like, do that? And I was like, no, you have to do that. I do not have any other gay people that work for us. And they were like, no, we don't. You're the first. I was like, oh, 
oh, okay, so uh, you guys should look into that. <laughs> and they did. And now they can cover my wife. So that's cool. Yeah. So I messed up, guys. I was only counting sales and production of the females that work for Odell. There's actually about 50 of us that work throughout the entire brewery. We like ladies. Sorry, guys. Tunnel vision. Okay, guys. I think that about wraps up uh, Women of Craft Beer Week. If anyone has any last-minute questions, feel, feel free to ask. Otherwise, I think this about does it. Thank you guys so much for coming down here. Like, this was... This was really, really, really cool. It's my favorite event every year. And um, like I said, only five or six came last year, only three or four the year before that. And now we are pretty much doubling, tripling every year. So let's do like 20 to 25 women next year and just see what happens. All right, guys, thank you so much for coming out. We appreciate you. We love you. And we'll see you on Saturday at Festival. Thank you. Well, thanks for listening to episode 121 of Brew Bloods. Thanks a lot to Brain Dead Brewing for having us out and letting us bring this to you. And thanks, of course, to all the women who were on the panel. I thought it was a great success. So I had a really fun time uh, doing that. Thanks to you for listening. If you're not subscribed to the show, you should. It doesn't cost you anything. You can find our show wherever you can find any other fine podcast. iTunes, Stitcher, Overcast, places like that. You can email us at brewbloodshow at gmail.com with any feedback, or you can find us on any social platform. We are at Brewbloods everywhere. So for Dustin and Jennifer and everyone at Braindead Brewing, I'm Mark. Probst. Probst.